Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up a blur for when you pause your game inside of Unreal Engine. What I mean by that is so if you press the pause button in the top left hand corner of your game you will notice it's very hard to see some of the buttons, some of the text and you really want to show the player that everything has been paused. And the way we're going to be doing this is by blurring out the game, giving a bit more focus to the game paused buttons. Now if you guys want to, you can also apply this technique to the game over screen and that is also going to be something I'll be covering in this video. So the way that we're going to be doing this is by adding in a blur component into the pause game UI screen. Now you will already have the UI for the pause game inside of your endless runner um, folder so this is going to be within your blueprints and then look for the widget blueprint called paused so runner files blueprints and then paused and then all you're going to do is double click to open this up we can add the component in and we're also going to be adding in an animation to fade that blur on so it comes on gradually rather than being strong and just looking a little bit odd so within your palette in the top, top left hand corner you want to look for a background blur and this is essentially just going to blur the background or blur the area that is selected rather. Now what I can do is scale this using the normal transformation tools within our UI editor or what I'm going to do is set my size X and Y to 1920 by 1080 set my position to zero and zero and anchor this to the full size of the screen so no matter what this is going to cover the entirety of our screen. With your blur strength you want to set this to zero by default and the reason why is because we're going to be fading this on starting off from zero. So having said that we're going to need to add an animation. So add an animation and we're going to call this blur fade just like that by pressing the plus animation icon in the bottom left. With blur fade selected we can go to the timeline tab if it isn't already open and what we're going to be doing is adding in our background blur into this and then we are going to add a track so press the little plus icon here and we are going to add a blur strength track and what this is going to allow us to do is essentially change the value of that blur strength over time. So at the moment, at zero seconds, we've got this set to zero. I'm going to move my little finder, uh, finder tool here to one second and set my blur strength to one. And you're going to notice now it has blurred out um, the background. But notice the buttons are sort of also being blurred, but that's an easy fix. But what you should have is if you drag your finder back to zero, press play, you can see that blur does fade onto the screen and it's quite subtle. As for actually getting your items to be on top of this, we are going to be using the Z order. The Z order is just essentially the order in which values are rendered onto the screen. Higher, vend higher values are going to be rendered last and so they will appear on top. So I'm going to select my buttons, uh, so I'm going to select my first button, set the Z order to 1. Select my second button, set the Z order on that to 1 as well, set the text Z order to 1 as well, and my background blur, that is going to have the Z order of 0, so this is underneath all of this. Now what I need to do is tell the engine to blur or play that background, uh, play that animation once this has been constructed so it fires off straight away. So go to your graph and then within here from our event construct we are going to drag out from the execution pin and tell this to play an animation. The animation for this is going to be our blur fade and you can find this underneath the variables tab. So drag that out, get a reference to it, and hook this up to your in animation. Target should be self, start time should be zero, and you only want this to play once in your forwards mode. So if you compile this now, press play, start playing your game, and then press that pause button, you can see it is starting to blur our game. 
Now notice the blur is not too strong. So what you might want to do is with your blur strength, you can play around with the value on this. So what you can do is at your end point at one second, you could change this to five and you're gonna notice then it does blur out the background a lot more. Press play, press pause, and you can see that blur is a lot stronger and you can see it more and there's more focus on those two buttons that we've created here to resume the game or go back to the menu, press continue and because the blur background component is part of the UI widget that's being closed, it's also being removed so it's doing exactly what you want it to do. So that is pretty much everything for blurring the pause screen. What we're also going to do is within our end game screen, we're just gonna do the same thing. So open this up and we are just going to add the background blur, drop it into the screen, set size X and Y to 19 by 20 by 1080, anchor that to the full screen and set your offset to zero and zero, zero and zero, and we are all good there. And what we've also got to do, set that Z order. We are going to set this to minus one, just to make sure that it's at the back behind everything. Or oh, the better way to do it is to set this to zero and then just go through all of your other elements or your images and make sure the Z order on that is all set to one. And the quickest way to do that is just select them all in the hierarchy and then just change that Z order in the details panel. It shouldn't take you any more than about 30 seconds to go through all of these and get it to have the correct Z order. So as you can see here, I'm just going through, setting my Z order on everything apart from that black background blur to one. And we're good there. With this background blur selected, once again, all we're doing is adding in an animation. We're gonna call this blur fade. With blur fade selected, add a track, background blur, add a blur strength track, and all we're doing is at zero seconds, it should be zero, and then at one second, it should be five. And from there, go to your graph, the main event graph, and then on construct, simply tell it to play, animation, hit compile, to make sure our animation is there, blur fade, get a reference to that and hook it up to your in animation. Hit compile, and now, when we end the game, as you saw there, if we run into something, it is gonna blur the background and only really have focus on that end game screen. Anyway guys, I hope you guys know how to use the blur component a little bit better, and have also had a little bit of an introduction to using the animation tool to fade that in as well. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for this video. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep curating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.